What's up, everybody? Welcome to Become a Game Composer. This is the live composing show. I'm your host, Stephen Malin. I'm so glad that you've decided to join us here today because a brand new plugin just released a couple days ago from our friends at Red Room Audio. You might be wondering what, what we're talking about here today. This is the gypsy violin or the gypsy fiddle. So as a violin player myself, anytime that there is a new string library on the market, especially a solo string library, I'm always highly skeptical. In fact, um, I've been approached by other companies, even some really big companies, um, and they've showed me their products and they've showed me their new solo strings library and they've even had really cool stories behind them. And then I go to play the dang thing and it sucks. I'm so particular about this because I'm a string player. I, I've for oh golly since I was 11 years old. So um, for 19 years, I've played violin, viola, and a little bit of cello. And they're instruments I know in and out. I know all the articulations and, and the different ways of playing them and the nuances of the fingerboard and open strings versus fingered and double stops and all the different ways of, of playing and, and all that stuff. Um, it's, it's something that's very near and dear to my heart because besides piano, which has historically been my favorite instrument of all time and still is, number two slot goes to solo strings. It's one of my favorite things to write for and it's one of the things that bugs me the most is when a sample library just does a very poor job of being a musical or does a poor job of being realistic. And I've even gone to the degree, let me jump on my soapbox real quick for a sec. I've actually tried making my own string sample libraries. Like I'm pretty good with contact. I can program some things. I've gone through, I've tried recording my violin and I've tried and done my cello and I've tried doing these sample instruments to make them sound legato, to make them really sound realistic, and I've just failed miserably. And over the years, as I've tracked different companies, like I have a very short list of, of instruments, of sample instruments that I think sound real and are easy to use right out of the box. And that's, that's really the prerequisites for me. So I'm very excited today to talk about Gypsy Fiddle by Red Room Audio, not only because I love the guys at Red Room Audio and... They always make amazing stuff, but specifically because this one today definitely fits those two criteria. And as a bonus, it's also not expensive. This is something that you could pick up really easily today. And what we're going to do here during this stream is we're going to just do a very quick review, a first look, because it just released, take a first look at the sample instrument itself, which is quite simple, but very deep. And then we're going to write a live demo with the that instrument as the feature instrument. We're going to write kind of some orchestration around it. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Knock this out over the next hour or two, and I hope that you'll stick around to the end. So I want to make your attention, point your attention to um, in the description below, you'll notice that there's a link there for 10% off discount. This is not available anywhere else. I am a partner with Red Room Audio, and so they're very kind to uh, take care of you guys as my audience. So you'll notice in the link below, you can click on that, and that is an affiliate link that supports my channel at no additional cost to you. You won't find that anywhere else, and so use the code Gypsy Malin. I thought that was kind of a funny coupon code. Use Gypsy Malin, and you'll get 10% off. And this is not their only violin product. They also have the Celtic and the Bluegrass fiddle and violin. So these guys are masters of programming. Like I hold them to the same regard as Embertone. They don't release a lot of instruments, but when they choose to do an instrument, especially a part of this Traveler series, they go all out. Like they literally go to the location, in this case, Bulgaria and not Bulgaria, uh, Romania. I'll have to look it up. I wrote it in the description, <laughs> um, but they, they literally go to on site, on location. They find a master of their craft in that city and they really capture the essence of that sound. And it, it's just so phenomenal to me. Um, 
Where was I going with that? I don't know, but use that link in the description. And if you want to check out some of the other Red Room audio products, we've talked quite a bit about Palette, about Symphonic, uh, Palette, Symphonic Sketchpad, and those different packs. We've talked about um, Saga, which is their trailer percussion. Um, and of course, now we're talking about the Traveler series and these solo instruments. So there's a link in the description as well that you can use 20% off to get any of those products as well if you want to kind of explore some some of the other things they have highly highly recommend it um, and i know dicky personally he is the um the head of red room audio and we've had some cool discussions about how he actually creates these products and it's it's nothing short of phenomenal his programmers are are top notch um and uh let's welcome everybody here today welcome chance david rubin um how do i say your name Zhao. J-O-A-O, Zhao, that's a cool name. Um, and Chance says, Celtic violin, you say? Why, yes, I do. Go check it out. Um, these guys are masters of programming. And somehow, they're, I don't know how, but they're able to keep the um, the price point on these products really low. And it's, it's kind of crazy. Um, so definitely check it out. So the first thing I have to do is, while we're comparing today, as we look at the Gypsy Violin, I have to compare to my previous favorite violin library of all time, which I still hold as the best out there for something, uh, and that's the Joshua Bell violin. So let's just jump in here. I don't want to take up too much of your time with this beginning portion, but the Joshua Bell violin, this is something that I use almost on every single project that I do. That's not really the main point of our discussion here today, but this is obviously the top question you guys have is how does it compare to Joshua Bell? Um, Cause this is something I'm definitely, I guess you could call me a spokesman for Joshua Bell. Um, if you remember back when I did a review of this for Embertone a couple years ago, Joshua Bell himself, the, the world famous violin player commented on that video saying that like, I really did justice to it. It sounds just like him. Um, now, I don't want to give her a huge review of this, but the reason I love Joshua Bell Violin so much is because it's so intuitive and easy to use. It has this smart AI built in that it, it changes articulations based on the way that you touch the, the keyboard and stuff. Obviously, it's incredible, right? And I talk about that all the time. It's something that I use in almost all my tracks. However, the Joshua Bell violin is a very Western style instrument. It's Joshua Bell, right? This is like classical music. This is that traditional European sound. And it is highly usable. And this is something I still use in almost all my productions. However, it's not... Um, a truly Eastern sound. And so sometimes you just need something different. And what I love about the gypsy violin, this is why we're here today, is this thing is just as easy to play. And for some reason, my... I know why. I had my pedal down. Whoops. The This plays very differently from Joshua Bell. Um, it's a different way of playing. This is an incredibly deep library, and I don't have time to go through every single little facet of it, um, but I highly encourage, for anyone interested, if you want to go into a 20-minute deep dive of this, highly encourage you to head over to um, the webpage, 
which is linked below in the description. This is the Traveler Series Gypsy Fiddle. And if you scroll down right here, there's a YouTube video. That it's a video walkthrough. Um, and they'll just kind of walk you through the history of, of that's Dickie. And that is their violinist. Um, and I want to confirm this. It is in uh, Bulgaria. Yep. So Sofia, Bulgaria is where they recorded this. And he goes literally just to a deep dive of how every single one of these different uh, parameters and features you can do. And it's really, really deep and it's amazing. Um, I also highly encourage anyone who purchases this to check out the user manual, which I have pulled up here today because it's really hard to remember what all the key switches do, which is here. Um, it's not a short, it's not a long guide. It just kind of gets right to the point, but what it does is it kind of goes through each of the key switches, which are all these different guys right here, all the different colors. And it just kind of defines what every single key switch does and how you can effortlessly combine these different elements to create a highly customizable playable instrument just for you. So it, it, it takes a little bit more time up front than say Joshua Bell, which you kind of pull out of the box and it sounds beautiful, but the Joshua Bell style is legato. It's like, it's all about the virtuosic side. But what we're trying to do with the gypsy fiddle is we really want it to sound very raw and like a street gypsy, right? It's supposed to have this very playful vibe. So what we're trying to do is replicate this sound of really short, fast notes and double stops with pizzicato and uh, staccato and spiccato and trills and accents versus vibrato and then all these little flourishes. How the heck are you supposed to be able to do that musically and transfer between all these different things unless you have a clean engine that through a key switch will change on the fly. So a few parameters that we really have to jump into to even understand how to use this. Um, I'm gonna do my best here because I'm really gonna summarize, but there's a really cool engine that runs the whole thing. So this first page that we see is the, the main instrument itself. And there's a lot of buttons, there's a lot of key switching and stuff, but the main thing you gotta know is the C keys here are the different articulations. So it's basically long, which are your sustains, trills, spiccato, and pizzicato. So I can go to any of my notes. Let's just play a little passage. And you'll notice, this is so cool. Look how it says velocity, 26 to 115. Velocity, 1 to 25. Velocity, 116 to 127. So these three patches are actually one and the same. So how hard I push the note, actually changes which of the patches it goes to. And then there is a portamento automatically programmed in that if I play uh, softly and connect my notes, So that way, even just that, the legato portion, and then if I can use my mod wheel over here to change the dynamic wheel, So that's kind of what is going on with that first section. And then you'll notice that there's a key switch assigned to every single articulation after that. So the rest of them, I can just literally walk up. I'll just click on them for now, but you see down here, actually you can't see that, so I'll, I'll use my keyboard. But you can see on my keyboard, if I push the different key switches, it'll change. Right, and then here's pizzicato. Okay, and then if we continue moving up the key switches, you'll notice that we have these green ones. These are the extended techniques that are specific to a gypsy fiddle. So the gypsy sustain is really cool because it has the harmonic overtones on top. Very usable, especially the high range. So this is the kind of stuff that Joshua Bell violin will never do the highly stylized gypsy sound, like harmonic minor type stuff. That kind of thing. And I'll kind of move up some of these. Um, here's a gypsy trill. I can find my key switches. That's why having the manual open is good just to refer to.
That's tenuto. And then this one's cool. It's the eighth note repetition, so I can just hold it down. I can change the notes. Right? And yes, uh, uh, Zhao, if that's how you say your name, it will fit, he says, uh, it will fit really good in Western bar fights. Yeah, that's true. 16th notes. And yes, uh, Chance, this is very dry out of the box. This is without any reverb at all. So if you were to take the, just for reference, if you were to take the Joshua Bell violin and take off all the reverb, it doesn't even sound that great. So actually, the reverb is doing a lot of the heavy lifting. And just for our reference, just so we can kind of uh, play around a little bit, let's add our own reverb just as a reference point because you know you got to compare things at equal values so here is just a, a musical hall at 50 percent and here's the gypsy violin So it, it can do every bit of the, the nimble stuff. It just doesn't have reverb baked in. So I'm going to turn it off so we can, you know, hear exactly what's happening. But that stuff is nice and it's interesting, right? The extended techniques are pretty cool. But my favorite part of this whole thing are the red keys because these are um, ornamentations. And I've never seen programming like this. So pay attention. This is really interesting. And I hope that other sample libraries will learn from this and start implementing this because I think this is the one, one of the most musical ways to implement a style, a stylistic uh, way of playing naturally into MIDI. So check it out. So this, for example, the horse ornamentation, if I go to the key switching of C1, which is, I guess this one. Yep, there it is. So here's what happens. If I hold down the key, well, let me, let me, reset we're we're on a sustained patch right this is back to this original idea that's like out of the box you open it up this is what it sounds like good not the best it doesn't necessarily sound like a gypsy fiddle so what we can do is we can use these little ornamentations and here's the best part when i hold down the key so I'll hold down the C, which controls the horse ornamentation. The next note I play will throw on the ornamentation for that one note only. See? And then I can let go of it and keep playing. This is cool because it doesn't steal the show. What it does is it just inserts the ornamentation to whatever key I want. So let me just play a little passage. That is where this thing shines. So then I can walk up and they have a bunch of them. So I can go to the next one, which is called Ghost, and do the exact same thing. And of course I can bounce between the two. So, wow, we're getting into a lot of uh, flexibility here. And then, of course, we can keep adding and choosing the ones that we like the most. So here's another one called Passion. So you see how it starts to get a little bit microtonal, which is more of that Russian style. It's that Eastern sound of we're bending the pitches between the pitches. So we can have a beautiful melody...
but was different between that and Joshua Bell is now we can insert these little ornamentations. Isn't that cool? Um, and then there's a second page of articulations. This is when, this one's called the Sardis. So you can just go down the list and, and have fun with it. It's definitely a key switched patch. So if, if key switching just drives you bananas, then don't get this because there's no way around it. You have to use the key switches to effectively use the patch the way that it's built. Um, but of course, you could always write your line of music. You could write a melody with your MIDI, play it in, whatever, and then you can go back and just do key switching on the bottom of the automation to make sure that it's constantly changing to the ornamentations you want. But that's what's so neat about this is I don't have to change the way that I play the melody. So let's, let's take a very famous melody like I don't know, twinkle, twinkle, little star. And then let's add the ornamentations. Whoops. Right. It was kind of stupid choice there, but you get the idea that I don't have to change the melody. I don't have to change the MIDI. I'm just adding these different key switches that help to add some flourish. So that's the main, I like the meat of the, of the instrument here, but there's some other cool nuances that are worth mentioning. So we have these three buttons up here. This first one, is, it represents the four strings of a violin. So there is a key switch. Let me show you the full page here. There's a key switch here. It's G sharp, it's, so it's like the very top of the range here. So let me get to that. And you know you found it if when you hold it down, there are these little light blue, this little cyan color pops up. So there are four keys, one for, that represents each of the four strings of a violin. This is so brilliant. Um, this, is, this is something I wish people have come up with before. And this is actually one of the, the stumbling blocks and one of the reasons why sampling has not reach the level of realism that we need as string players. Because check this out. I'll take this back off again. So what's gonna happen is when, I, notice I'm holding down the key and then the blue ones pop up. So what's gonna happen, let me drag this up so we can see my fingers as we play. Otherwise this gets really confusing if you can't see my hands. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play a little line. So let's play something low, like on the G string of a violin. It's the lowest string, right? That's the open G. So if I play a little line that gets high, it should sound like this. Cool. And so what happens if I hold down that key? What's gonna happen is it's going to extend the range of the G string, because most violin players, especially pros like this, when they're playing really difficult stuff, it doesn't make any sense to shift your hand back to first position or root position to play the next string. Because what is what is more natural is to continue playing high, 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 high as your fingers go up on the string. And that's just how you play quickly and more virtuosic. So they actually have sampled every note on every string and they overlap each other. So instead of playing the G string to the D string, which is what a normal sample library would do, which is the default, if you hold down this key, now the range has, an ex has been extended and it has a much more stretched and like distressed sound. So let's play that same thing. I'm gonna hold down the key. Again. Here's the D string, G string. It's a little bit more muted. So it's just a subtle thing, but I think that's really neat that you could play through a passage like this and you can choose the string you want to play on. Pretty cool. So that's a cool feature. And you'll notice how when I hold down one of these keys, how it lights up at the top here, this little four string thing. It's just showing you which of the four strings you're actually on in that moment. The second one is this little legato, this little slur. So by default, when I play quickly, 
or I play portamento between two notes, it's going to create a slur. So naturally, you would go na da, you go down bow or up bow. And what's cool about this is I can change the rebowing option from new, which means every single note I play, which is this up and down arrow thing. You know, normally if you're playing a string instrument, it goes down, up, down, up, down, up, and you just go back and forth while you change notes. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. But instead, you can change it to where the full length of the bow is being used. This is phenomenal. I've never seen this. So what it means is instead of down, up, down, up, it'll be down, up, or down, up, or whatever it is. So however long you hold a note will determine the length. And it literally resamples the changing of a bow for the next pitch. This is crazy realistic. So check this out. So now that it's set to rebow up length, you'll kind of hear the, the bow changing while sustaining. So what it's doing is it's emulating a forever slur, which is really cool until, of course, you let go of the notes, then it would start the next bow. So it's very smart. And then on top of all of that, again, I don't have time to go through every little parameter here, but on top of all that, um, they have a... Where is it? Let me find it. Oh, there's so many cool things about this. I mean, let's just walk through. So we have dynamics. That's obviously the mod wheel. That's how loud it is. The width controls if it's going to be um, mono, like in the center, which is a much more realistic recording. But if you want the full take over the world stereo, do a full 100%. Right? And then the timbre controls how bright or dark it is. And a great note from Ruben in the chat says, you don't have to use the key switches. You can change how you play. So let's get to that. So the tact engine, which is the um, kind of the backbone of this entire engine, you can change the way that every single note is played, that each one of these different articulations is approached. By default, they're all key switches. And that's why it says auto mapping. You could change that to velocity splits, to CCs, to all kinds of different things, to pedals, to emulate the style of, um, what's it called? Cine samples. All of their patches are like short versus long is controlled by the pedals. So you can actually go through and do all of that. You can even decide for um, any of these articulations that instead of holding down the note causes it to trigger, you could actually just do latch. You push it once, and then for every note after that, it's going to continue being that articulation. That's what this this latch button is for. So you can just turn that on and off as you wish. You can change from key switching to velocity switching to bending to ranges to pedals. So this thing is fully customizable, but if you just open it up as is, then it is going to be uh, strictly key switch based. So that's what that is all referring to. So this thing is crazy deep. And one more. Um, oh, this is what I was going to talk about earlier. The mode is really special too. So if you stick to mono, it'll be what we just showcased. Where you have to basically push everything manually. But if you move this to polyphonic, then you can play two notes at once. Thanks for subscribing, T Wood. Um, but I think my favorite is Smart Mode, which it auto detects whether or not you're playing a double stop. But as soon as you change the note, it goes back to single. still keeps all the articulations I play. So I can keep changing. Oh, this is a little challenge. It's not challenging, but it's, it's a, a little bit different way of playing music. And you can also change crazy too. If you're holding it down, you can actually change the direction as well. 
to go from up to down. So that same uh, little horse, for example, or ghost in this instance, you can just go to town. And then the final mode here is DS, stands for double stop. And in here, you can actually change whatever you want to. And what it does is it automatically maps the keyboard to double stop intervals based on a key. So the key you can change with these little yellow buttons down here. Um, so if I just click D, for example, it changes to D major and now everything I play. Pretty cool. So of course, you can match this with any of your articulations. And then, of course, you can even go over here, and if you hold down a key, say D, and the half step above it, it'll change the scale lock to D minor. So that's how you make it minor. So, again, there's, just, there's a lot of interesting ways to control this thing. So if there's a sound in your head you want to get, you can do it. You just got to play around with the controls a little bit to make it bend to your will so it's out of the box it sounds great but it's definitely an instrument that you want to spend a few minutes with to get more familiar with that way when you are recording live so i think my favorite is to kind of stick with the shorts and the longs just go to town on this thing so it's a lot of fun i know i just spent 30 minutes talking about it but it even goes deeper than that especially when you start talking about the tact the articulation setup here in the middle where you can just go to town controlling how things work and then of course there's this uh, effects rack as well you could add if you want it to sound more like an electric violin you can play around all day with distortion and that kind of stuff and that's just the main patch that's the gypsy fiddle patch and then on top of that it also comes with a phrases and effects patch which you could write an entire piece with as well, which are all these different scrapes and percussive things. And that by default is all controlled by your um, key switches. So it's just, you know, anything that's in the blue here, you can play. So you could have different percussion things. Those are very quiet, but there's string noises and then scrapes. <laughs> But I think the, the most interesting here are these five different um, preset phrases. So that they recorded their violinist just playing oodles and oodles, like literally hundreds of phrases that are time stretched, by the way. So you can actually change when the sample starts, when the sample ends. You can change the speed of that one patch. So if we're gonna do some like lyrical phrases like this, you can make it slow. You can change the tuning of it to change the key. Of course, if you time stretch it too much, it might sound a little bit weird. But it's pretty dang cool. So it allows you to go up or down speed of 30%, and then you can just instantly on the fly change the tuning of it. Change the volume and all those sorts of things. So I think it's pretty darn cool. Even the runs in the arpeggio, arpeggios here, very usable. Like stuff like that, like crazy fast pizzicato scales. That's super usable to throw in in little, maybe like the, the fourth bar of a phrase. We might play around with some of that stuff. 
that's the stuff that a sample instrument is going to have a really hard time emulating, right? But if you write a three bar phrase and then throw that at the end, it, it's quite usable. So what I want to do is I want to come up with I want to figure out what key that one's in. Which means I have to reset all the things. How I've played with it quite a bit. I think it's A minor. Yep. So I have one question for you guys. You ready to write some music? I know you've stuck with me this long. Appreciate you guys being here. So there you go. There's kind of the quick and dirty. Believe it. I mean, it's hard to believe it that 30 minutes is the quick version, but this thing is deep. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun to play around with. Again, check in the description below to get that 10% discount. Use Gypsy Malin as your coupon code. Go have some fun with that. Now we're going to have some fun together writing a demo using all that we just learned. So let's, <laughs> let's jump in. So the first thing I want to do is come up with a melody. And I want to do something in harmonic minor, because um, that's very much the gypsy style. And I think it'd be fun to maybe throw some ornamentations in there. There's a thing called a gypsy scale. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with that. So a harmonic minor scale is when you just play a minor scale, like an A minor. You take the seventh note and you raise it up a half step, so it'd be a G sharp. The gypsy scale also adds a flat two and a sharp three. So it automatically just having those extra flats in there it adds so much uh, interesting color. be a lot of fun to play with this. So a couple things before we start, I'm going to make this a mono instrument because that's how I actually record these types of instruments in real life. I like to do a mono width because I like to take that sound and then throw it through a reverb that is stereo. So I'm going to take that reverb we used earlier, probably do it a little bit of a smaller percentage. Cool, I think we're ready to begin. So I like that, I like that. Um, and I think we're good to go leaving it on those settings. Maybe I might change it to smart. There's a lot I could do with this. So I like keeping that little bit of reverb on there. 
I think we're just going to fly here. So let's get a Kimpo. It's not crazy fast. Maybe like 110, but something we could dance to. <laughs> Chance, you're funny. Yeah, I like to talk a lot. All right, you ready? <laughs> Try to decide if I like that better than the mono. My default is to do legato first. On smart mode, so let's do that. sounding here we go let's have some fun Time. I like the idea. It's a cool idea.
So here's what I was talking about. I think it's cool. It has some potential here. So what I want to do is kind of leave alone any of the quantization stuff. Now I want to go to the fourth measure of each. I already feel like that's pretty quiet sample wise. So I want to just crank it up a little bit. So here I can do this. Oops. I'm going to combine these two elements to create the idea. So I am going to copy over the reverb into the phrases as well. But we have some context. So we'll go back over here. Oh, my screens. There we go. Uh, like that one. So you see how interesting that is? So much more interesting. That's the kind of stuff I'm gonna I'm gonna take like a it'll take a year to program that for me. <laughs> but to have a nice melody and to throw some ornaments in. So the ornamentation part that I was referring to is taking something like this and let's pull open the key switches. So down here, it's a lot to put on the screen at once, but just to show you what I'm trying to do is get some of these reds in there so I can hold down the key switch that gets me there, which is gonna be like C1. And it should show you when it does that. Ay, ay, ay. No. Yeah, so you can tell by the, like, the little audio icon there. Okay, so that's way over here. Okay, there it is. I just gotta find the right octave for these. Okay, so what I'm gonna do I'm going to be pushing down the different ornamentations while it plays to, to help coax it into the style a little bit more. So it, it's a two-step process, but it, it's fine. But you see how already it feels way more interesting. So the first step is I got to make sure that I'm getting the very first articulation which is gonna be the C that establishes the legato. That's why I have an extra bar here to play with. So what I can do is just take these little bits and pieces and I will quantize these as just little quarter notes or even like a 16th note, I suppose. And I'm just gonna take these and kind of litter them throughout. Like this. And the goal here is to find one of the articulations I like. So it just kind of goes a little crazy, right? It's like that one. Pretty cool. So I'll do another one. So this is a different articulation. So there's a little bit of programming here. modulation might just need a little bit of coaxing there let's take a look what's actually happening ah 
Aha, so it's actually changing on accident. Interesting. <laughs> so you can see how you can go as wild or as simple as you'd like with this. Um, but what I'm going to do is pull open some, some quick tricks to, to fill in the background. So I want to grab ostinato which we will find in um, strings ensemble. There it is. This is from Suna Kinetic. Really quick way to write music. Let's see. So we're in what? A minor. <laughs> Take that, so that's Austin out of strings. And we're gonna turn that down a little bit and write ourselves some music. You see how cool that sounds. <clears throat> so we just got to change our volumes a little bit. Oopsies. It wasn't great, but get the idea. Um, so I'm going to quantize all those. You can adjust it as we need, but you kind of get the idea how quickly you can do something like this. Let's keep going. So we're gonna play in this style. It's gotta be a little bit goofy. Boom, 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 boom. I'm thinking. I don't even know. Some kind of clarinet woodwind, something. That part sounds the worst to me. Um, let's leave that alone for a minute. I like this idea of like the big classical sound, yet we're using this gypsy style. Pretty cool. Okay. Do you want to quantize? 
recognize that. why that sounds so different. So the phrases here, we want to make sure that it's the same width. So it needs to actually be mono as well. Now it'll say that it sound the same. And then make this smart. Saving the day. There we go. We're making some progress here. So let's grab some markers to better identify what on earth is happening. So mark track. So this is the A section, it's the main theme. This is our B. This is our C. This is the the ending. Sound cool with some uh, repetitions. Let's see what that sounds like. So it's really just going to be a process of kind of combining these different elements to be as realistic as possible, but also interesting and melodic and all that. So let's 
double that with some strings. I'm gonna grab some, uh, let's do some legato violins. That'll sound cool. In the background, just kind of doubling the melody. It's the nature of key switching instruments is they you have to get them, you have to reset every time. I wonder if that's because it's you know that weird stuff because of the uh, smart mode. All right, so this kind of thing, it's cool for one measure, and then you got to supplement it with. Thank you. 
Of course, at the end of the day, you could you could program all these things in and just take a long. Very different direction than I thought I was going to take today. So here's an instance where I want to change that one speed by like 90%. I want it to land right on the beat. Which means I want the second one. This one to be a little bit slower too. here is if you don't perfectly connect these notes with portamento they get really, really choppy like that so you got to massage this stuff so if every one two notes to be connected with the, the bow you want to make sure that they're touching What's up, Chris? Welcome. Pretty cool so far. Here, I want to do a little bit of uh, some of those turnarounds. So let's add a little bit of the uh, different little ornamentations here. So I'll do it slightly before the bar. I want to choose 
probably this one here. And if you remember, we have to go into the tact here if we don't want it to stick. So what I hear right now is the Sardis um, articulation right here. I want to make sure that the latch is turned off. That way it doesn't continue to play at every single time I play a pitch after that. So I don't like having the latches on. Place in the lee. Let's turn those off. Okay, back to the show. the idea of this whole thing is to just be playful and experiment and obviously this I could spend hours on this just tweaking it to make exactly the cool phrases I want but you kind of get the idea here so I want to spend a few more minutes on it see what else we can do um, and we'll go from there <laughs> I might almost just leave it right there. It should be nice and short and sweet. Um, but I do want to add a little bit of brass. I'm actually just going to do... Um, wait for it. haven't used these in, in a while. I want to pop out... This is the ADO New Century Brass. I just think it sounds so good. Um, so I'll get out the 12 horns. Let's see if we can double that melody to help add a little bit more richness to the mix. Because right now it's kind of ugh, bare bones. This is also a 50 gigabyte patch. It's going to take a second. But it's one of those things that once it's loaded into the RAM, it's in there until I close the session. So then I could you know, do 10 more of these duplicate and it, it won't load more. It's one of the new scary things about contact instruments. As larger they get, the first one takes forever to load, even on a SSD it's very, very fast for everything smaller, but you got 50 gigs. It just takes a minute. Um, so what do you guys think so far? Pretty cool, huh? Just one of those things, one of those libraries you got to tweak. Nothing wrong with that. It just takes a little bit longer. All right, cool. So we're going to grab Legato. And then I'm going to make sure that I am purging this sample. Cranking that volume up. So double that or do some third or something. Alright. These are legato, so you can do monophonic. do with this one is let's see if we can grab
All right, let's bite the bullet. Ostinato Brass. Incoming. Uh-huh. All right, so Brass Ensemble. There we go. <clears throat> and what I can do with this, I can literally just drag and drop the the MIDI information from the Ostinato strings. But change the rhythm. Quick and dirty way to write music fast. All right. But with this, I need to get. doing
all over the place today. Just today. Not cool. There. Are we done? Are we done? Alright, cool. Alright, guys. So this is obviously a very different direction than what I normally do um, writing in this style, but this is a lot of fun just to experiment, to try some new things. So obviously, uh, this instrument, the gypsy fiddle, is very versatile. It can do a lot of different things. Uh, but ultimately, this is one of those instruments that you can really get a lot of mileage out of it but you have to take some time and um it sounds great out of the box but it's also it's so deep in the different articulations and key switches and kind of setting it up and customizing it to your own liking that it might take a little bit of time just to get it set up the way you like it and that way you can write a little bit easier um, but this was still a lot of fun um, i think we're going to wrap it up at this point um, otherwise i'm just going to be med you know editing midi all day but I hope this was a, a really good first look and to help you make that decision. Okay, cool. I think this is something that's really going to help me in my arsenal. It's really going to help me write more in this Eastern style. And if so, I think this is a fantastic patch. And as mentioned at the beginning, you know, this is very similar to the Joshua Bell violin where it has a lot of things kind of combined in one. It has a smart engine. And of course, I think the whole bow changing thing, the double stop engine, the whole tact engine to make it customizable is just a lot of fun. So we're going to wrap it up here. Let's play through what we have so far just as a demo, and I hope that this was interesting. And as always, I'll see you next week for the next live composing show. We'll be back with either the game I'm working on or the musical that I'm still writing for. We'll see. We'll see what, what's going on then, but it's been a lot of fun. Thanks, guys, for being a part. I'll see you next time. And, of course, use the discount in below, or you can use the 20% off for the Celtic Fido. If that's something you're interested in, or even the bluegrass if you're not 100% sold in the gypsy style. Anyway, see you guys next time. Enjoy as we play out.